morning, everybody. This is Heather from Cosby Can Farms. And I'm Kimmy. I'm Kira. <laughs> and we are doing a Q&A today from questions that you've had. And I think this is something we're probably going to try and do on a regular basis. Um, as exciting as it is, having everybody make comments, it makes it really hard to answer all of the questions and continue to get work done. So I think this is going to be uh, at least twice a month and we'll counterbalance that with milling videos when we have extra milling videos for Saturday's content. Um, so Kim's going to read me the questions that you guys have sent and we're all going to try to answer them as best as we can. All right. So first one, Kelly. Kelly wants to know, how did you decide to build in the mountains off-grid? Well, <laughs> um, I have always wanted to do off-grid um, since it kind of became a thing um, and became more affordable for people to actually do. I actually um, struggled financially a lot when I got out of the service um, as a single mom with a child and had my electric turned off more than once because I couldn't afford to pay the bill. And this was to me something that I could like prepay for some stuff when I had the money and then I never had to worry about my lights being turned off. So, I mean, that, that really is the reason why. Um, and I also like not having to pay a bill to the electric company. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> now, up in the mountains, um, so that part of the question, um, I had visited Northern Idaho um, for about seven years, just on and off with people that were in this area that I kind of knew and loved it. I love the trees. I'm from Arizona and Texas. And there's not a lot of big trees there. I mean, where we live, there actually was quite a few oak trees was more Eastern Texas, but I love the uh, people up here. I love the trees. I love the mountains. I love all of those things. It's the best of both worlds. So whenever I got to visit over here, that was kind of my, I want to live in this area. So yeah, that's what brought me here. So Mary had the same question, so I'm going to go ahead and decide, uh, answer it for, from my perspective. Okay. I decided to go off grid because um, with how things have been changing in the world, um, you know, who knows what's going to be happening and I think Heather had a great plan. Um, I liked her dream, I liked what she was talking about doing and I wanted to be part of it. So when she invited me to join her and and you know, do some videography for her and just kind of help with different things on, on the homestead. Um, it's, I'm a city girl, so totally brand new thing, but I was all for it. I quit my job and um, moved from Florida to Idaho and uh, where I'm originally from, and, um, and I don't regret a minute of it. Even in the cold, even in the you know, hard work, I do not regret a minute of it. And that being said, you probably hear the hum of the generator in the background. We actually do not have our solar all hooked up yet, other than the small harbor freight um, panels that I have um, that I got last year for the RV. Uh, and that's because wire is really, really expensive yes. to get it from where the solar panels and the wind turbine are going to be in cool sun and where the wind turbine will get good wind. Um, I think that's about 200 to 300 feet from this area where the shipping container is. And so that's just gonna take a little bit to get the money to, to get that wire, to purchase that wire. I think when I looked it up, um, a 500 foot roll was about $1,500. So um, we are not, I'm not debt free. Um, I've been debt free for a very long time. So this makes me a little stressful to be this much in debt. Um, and, but I wanted to get started and I wanted to get things going. And, uh, so I decided to get some small loans to be able to get to this point. But at this point, I'm kind of out of savings. And so we're just doing it as, you know, money comes in and, and that kind of thing. So, um, I was really hoping to be hooked up on the solar and the wind turbine for this winter, but I don't know if we're going to be able to be. Uh, hooked up that way so we do use the generator a lot so we do have the price of the gas um, that we deal with which is is really expensive right now <laughs> it's double than what it was um, last year so 
you know, there's that. But we definitely have, you know, in the future, hopefully by next spring, we'll be able to have that whole solar system and wind turbine set up so that we're completely off grid and, and not having to even do the generator. The chickens have decided to join us and the turkeys, so you're going to hear them in the background. <laughs> Breakfast is late for them today. They've come to find us. <laughs> it's hysterical. <laughs> okay, let's see. So, A. Thompson, um, she says her question is how many people will live in the container and. Um, where will you all live this winter? So this one, so first part of that question, how many people live in a container? So my bedroom is actually going to be upstairs. It's the actual tree house. And then the shipping container will have its own bedroom, separate bedroom in it. And that's where Kimmy will be. Kira is in her cabin, which is really close to the shipping container. So we, uh, we're not connected, but we will be with deck and we will be piping heat over to her cabin from the wood burning stove that is here in um, the shipping container. The goal is to get all the framing done, the outside part closed in, zipped up, so that we can then start heating and start working on the inside this winter. So that'll be our winter project. Um, we're thinking of trying to get the RV closer to the shipping container so that we can also pipe heat in there. Uh, because we will be needing to use the kitchen and the shower and um, probably the beds and stuff for a little bit until we get this set up, um, you know, a little bit more enclosed in. But I did. So while we that, yeah. So building. there'll be two people right now in the shipping container. Here is in the cabin. But this is also the common area. Um, so the living room and the kitchen and the bathroom and all that is going to be in here. And Kira is will be using that. So basically her bedroom is just separate. Her cabin is basically just a bedroom. Um, there'll be no other facilities in there, a composting potty, but that's about it. Yeah. So um, Sherilyn wants to know what the floor plans are for the shipping container and are you making any additions or significant architectural changes? So we do have this, uh, what we were calling the mud room, but it's now actually, we were planning on putting the wood stove out here, but because of the trees and the coverage and all that kind of stuff, um, some people that know more than I do uh, told us we probably shouldn't do that. <laughs> so we've shifted the wood burning stove to inside the container, and this has become a, very, a small 10 by 10 living room. Um, and then we're actually going to be doing a video. We're going to tape out the floor plan on the inside, but just a general on the south side of the shipping container will be a bedroom. Directly in front of that will be coming, coming north. I'm going to work my way south to north. So you have a bedroom, you have a bathroom, you have a living room, and then you have the kitchen. So the living room is actually going to extend completely through the shipping container into this back area. So we'll have couches and chairs and stuff here and that will the part in the shipping container will be more of a, a walk through passageway kind of thing I may have a little desk there for editing um, if I don't put it up stairs but editing takes a lot of time and I don't want to just like seclude myself from everybody so <laughs> most likely it'll be downstairs but yeah we are planning on doing an entire video taping everything out and and walking you guys through that a little bit more in the future once we're buttoned up and closed in no other significant like architectural no. changes. We will be adding more piers underneath. Uh, we just didn't know exactly where the doors and stuff were going to be cut through. Um, and I wanted them, like this particular door behind you guys is a five foot cutout. And we'll be putting piers directly underneath that. And then the pass through, there'll be a big sliding glass door on the other side. So that would be on the west side of the shipping container. We are now on the east side of the shipping container. Um, so there'll be more piers put in underneath that, but that was something that we kind of decided that we could wait on. Uh, we will do some more bracing with lumber and then next uh, spring and summer, we'll be putting in actual concrete piers to hold that better. And the decking. And the decking up. So there'll be decking uh, all on the shipping container so it can uh, be a great place to sit. Have chairs. <laughs> and have <laughs> chairs. That's you. Yeah, exactly. So um, Deborah wants to know who are the three of you and why off grid. We answered the off grid, but right, not really who the three of us are. All right. So 
Uh, I'm Heather. <laughs> I started this whole uh, shenanigans. <laughs> um, and uh, we're, we're all actually um, been brought together through the military in one form or another. Um, Kira's mom at, was stationed with Kim and I in Hawaii when we were there and when we were like 19 years old. <laughs> so that's how long we've known each other because I'm 49. <laughs> I won't give away her age, but I'm 49. <laughs> 48. <laughs> and uh, um, yeah, so who are you? <laughs> uh, um, I'm Kira. I, I came as the extra muscle. Um, she is super strong. Yeah. <laughs> Truth be told, Truth be told, I came to live with Aunt Heather because apparently I fully came to the um, agreement that I was not living in a very good environment mm -hmm. at my mom's. So I decided, at first I was staying at my Aunt Jen, who was also part of the military with them. Another military friend. Yeah, she's another military friend, but... Um, I came to help her last year throughout the summer, and I really liked um, Idaho, so, and she invited me to stay with her, and being that everybody says me and her get along really, really well. Wait a minute, but don't you think we get along really well? <laughs> I, I, being how I grew up, I, I am a very big follower. I don't do good on making my own decisions. I do as old as best as I can. Um, I'm very, I'm autistic. We found that out like just a few years ago. We actually haven't known for long. Um, well, we knew. We just didn't know what was going on. Yeah. yeah. Well, they had a guess. I guess. Yeah. I was just like, Ooh. But um, I came to be with Aunt Heather because because I'm fun. She's fun. She <laughs> makes me feel safe. <laughs> She explains things to me pretty easily. How we call it is she speaks Kiranese. I do. I speak Kiranese really well. <laughs> um, I'm learning. Yeah. Although she really doesn't like my culinary choices. <laughs> but a lot of people think that Kira is either my daughter or my biological niece, and she's not. In all, in all uh, transparency, I did date her uncle for about five years, and when, when that relationship... Um, Blew up. Went away. <laughs> He's been temporary. Went away. So. Went away. <laughs> went away. We're not talking bad about anybody. <laughs> I'm just being nice and truthful that he was. I got. I got. I got, I got the kids in the in the the separation. So. <laughs> okay. And who the heck are you? Ooh. <laughs> 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 We've been best friends for a really long yeah. time. Um, I actually lived in Idaho in Boise, and um, and she would come visit me, and and you know stayed a little bit um, while I was there. And we've just been we stayed in touch through the years. And you came to Texas and visited me. I came to Texas, and she learned that in Texas, just around the corner, is a lot farther than in Idaho. <laughs> <laughs> so Heather always likes to say. Oh, it's really close. And then an hour into our drive, I'm like, <laughs> close to me is like 15 minutes. But so, yeah, I Heather always has had that. But I guess everything's bigger in Texas, including yeah. the distance. So, <laughs> yeah. It is what it is. Um, but, uh, yeah, so my journey is I was in Florida with my daughter uh, so she could go to college and uh, COVID hit. And uh, we decided we wanted to move back to Idaho. And... I specifically uh, liked her dream, so I um, am here to help her. And um, and I needed help with uh, someone doing a videoing so that I could focus on building. Yes. Yeah. And I step in when Kira's not around or when we need three men, three women, <laughs> three women. Yeah, um, the video correct. <laughs> then I step in and help and do what I can. For a while, I couldn't do anything because I uh, three days after getting here, I broke a rib. So I was kind of down and out for a while. But... I've got my strength back, or I guess I've gotten yeah. strength now, and 
And now well, I she does try to it. help a lot, and I, I actually stop her and tell her I prefer you to get video than to help us move logs and stuff like that. Yeah. So, Kira and I have been doing this for quite a while. Uh, well, not quite a while, but I mean, all last year, it was just her and I. And the one thing, we, we did a lot of really fun stuff. You guys just didn't get to see it because we couldn't video and actually do the work at the same time. So, you know, I, there have been people that have commented that Kim should put the camera on a tripod and, and get in there and help. And she actually offers every single time. And I stop her and say, no, I need you to video this. So quit giving her a hard time. I do. I also do just kind yes. of this things. Yes. I do a lot of the, you know, running errands and grocery shopping and cooking and dishes and that kind of stuff. So, yeah. I mean, like, we are really a team and, yeah. and you know, teamwork does make the dream work yeah. and um, we all have different uh, things that we're really good at um, and, you know, excel at and we, we try to, you know, do our best in those roles. Yeah. And, um, yeah. help out where it's we the only way that we could do this and bring you guys along. Exactly. Um, so, quit giving her a hard time. <laughs> <laughs> what? I don't hear you yell at her as often as you yell at me. <laughs> or what? Oh, Kara, why'd you climb up the shipping container door? Oh, Kara, well, why'd you Because she <laughs> doesn't do those things. <laughs> <laughs> as part of her autism, she just has no fear. Uh, yeah. I mean, like, she has fear of the ladder, which she's getting better at, I think. But um, she, she doesn't sense danger. She does kind of crazy things, like going over the side of the shipping container or climbing up the shipping container from the end, not from a ladder. Yes. Or apparently removing a, what was the red thing you called? Oh, the jack. The yeah, jack. the jack, yes. while we're trying yeah. to level the shipping so container. So it's falling and over. So you guys, I try really hard to be fun and speak kindly and all those things, but occasionally you will hear me pull out my mom voice yeah. <laughs> on Kira and um, please don't think that I'm being mean to her. It's just sometimes that she needs that startle response to stop doing those things <laughs> I'm very that are afraid. dangerous. So <laughs> it's not that you're airhead, it's just that you don't sense danger. That's part of her uh, um, autism. It's one of the side things that she has. Yeah. So, um, you know, I'm just not yelling at her. It's just that, um, you know, one, I want to keep it real and I want you guys to see what we are doing and, and you know, Kira herself is a huge inspiration to people that, that have talk, autism or families that are, their kids have autism and, you know, she does a lot, she's a she huge amount and honestly, I don't, I don't think, like, we definitely wouldn't be this far if she wasn't here. I mean, that's, physically, I can't do the things by myself, I need the second person and yes, I do have a son. But he also is married and running his own business and has two babies and just cannot be up here every day. And so, he works seven days a week. Seven really days a week. He's a busy, hardworking <laughs> yeah. man. Yeah. So. so, I mean, last year you guys saw him in some of the older videos. He would come with the skid steer and he would do clearing and, and all of those things. But he just can't be up here. So, that's where Kira stepped in and she does a huge amount. Um, you know, but I do have to watch her as far as her wanting to stand on the logs and do that kind of stuff because that's fun. Um, but there is that sense of danger and she just doesn't get that. So, um, you know, please um, Don't think understand. Me. I'm not being mean. I'm not trying to yeah. be mean. I just, I have to pull out mom voice every now and then. I know she's not being mean. <laughs> I do occasionally, okay, probably more than occasionally, try to over help. Yes, she is. So, <laughs> but it's just like, I go help! And it's like, I can't think of what to do, so I'll just go ahead and do this. And then when I get like sidetracked and distracted, then she has to use her mom voice because I'm just like, do do do. What am I doing? That's true. Okay, we got another question. She oh. also uh, tries to do things on her own that she shouldn't, so we do have to get on her about that. But yeah, just um. yeah. <laughs> apparently, apparently moving a six by six, twelve foot log by yourself is a no. Yes. A no, that that's a no-no. That's a two-man job. Now you all know I did it by myself. I was like, and then she probably got yelled at. I thought, okay, I wanted everybody to know, to be fair, I thought it all through first. I was like, this is a little long and heavy, but Heather wouldn't have sent me over here if she didn't think I could do it. So I didn't know it was 12 foot long. I thought it was like 4 foot long. So I grab it and bring it all the way over, and I'm expecting to be like, oh yeah, you did it, Kara. No. Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> okay, what else we got? All right, so Russell says, I love container build, but what drew you to build one yourself? Um, he's a funny uh, old man from Florida, he okay. says. <laughs> watching Life Uncontained and loved what they did and it actually started because they're in Texas and, and I'm a Texas girl so which now I would actually say I'm an Idahoan because I love it up here probably I'm just not even gonna say that but anyway <laughs> so I had been watching them I liked what they did uh, and back to the funds running out I did want to do a tiny house uh, my plan uh, I bought the property um, I got the sawmill and then I bought a RV and um, I did not want to stay in the RV for five years that was not really my goal so I had thought a tiny house which would be great to then convert into a guest space or a canning kitchen or something to that a craft area something to that aspect um, so when uh, at the beginning of the year when you know, when, we, when I went from one person to three people, we really need to expand because the, the, it's a small RV, it's not a big one. It's, um, the living space in the RV is 19 feet, the total space of the RV is 29 feet. So it's a small RV. It's, it's been wonderful, but it's very crowded. And so we were trying to figure out, did we want to build something completely from scratch? Um, and being that I'm milling the lumber, that would have taken a very, very long time. And I had already purchased the shipping container. That was the other thing that I had purchased to put storage on the property of all of my stuff. And I just made the financial decision that putting everything into storage, breaking that down to you know hundred dollars a month payment, and then converting this um, because I had seen other people do it and it was really cool and it looked really cool. Um, I actually wanted a treehouse, <laughs> and she's gone. You guys can't see her. <laughs> something that I had that I owned that I could do with the least financial input and using what I have already and what I've already spent and getting a tree house. <laughs> She's wanted a tree house for a very long time. Since I was 10. We used, we used to watch tree house masters. Yes, all the time. Tree house masters. Like, all the time. <laughs> so now she gets it. You should have seen her the other day when we were out there. She's like a little kid all giddy. And it's exciting. You just wait. It's coming up. It's coming up yeah. in the next week. You'll see what we've done. Well, actually, maybe not in the next week. I guess maybe we should address that. So we had a few really, really long days that I had to split into multiple videos. For instance, all last week's videos was actually one day's worth of work. Um, but again, in order to bring you guys along, um, I'm not a professional builder. I think you guys, and I could be wrong, so comment below and let me know <laughs> that you'd rather see our humor and all of that kind of stuff than hardcore building stuff. Um, you know, because we're just trying to inspire and show the journey and, you know, our humor and having fun while we're doing this is part of that yes um uh, you know the building is fun it's neat to see the thing come together but you're definitely not going to learn to build <laughs> what i'm doing so i do a lot of things wrong um and that's okay because i learn i'm learning that was you know the other thing about doing these small buildings was to learn um before i tried to tackle a larger you know house situation because we will be building Kim is wanting an A-frame house. We'll be building that on the property. Uh, Kira's actually uh, kind of wanting um, another tiny house. It's an entire contained house. Bigger than this. Yeah. Thing. And then I actually want um, a barnuminium type house. So we have lots. Yeah, we have a lot of stuff coming up that we're going to be doing. And some of that we may um, have some more professionals. So I'm, I'm kind of thinking of maybe have uh, the bigger house or have, have the bar dominium, somebody build the frame and that kind of stuff, and then we're doing the smaller stuff, because physically, we're hurting. <laughs> I'm probably going to be pre-ordered. I'm not 29 years old anymore. <laughs> I'm like six, and I still can't do this. So, yeah. So, um, you know, but that's why the shipping container, uh, it gave me space. I already had it. I didn't have to financially add any more money into the situation, other than, you know, lumber and that kind of stuff. So, that was I have to say one of the things I really enjoy about this whole thing is like 
like we are making some great experiences together like yeah. great memories yeah. it, you know that's part of the reason we document all the fun things too because if we're just documenting just the build then what fun is that i mean like yeah. you know we're not yeah. a building yeah. channel per yeah. se we're you know we're just three friends mm -hmm. um hanging out family i feel yeah. like we're more family yeah, just hanging out and you know making an experience and um you know i would think we're family due to the fact that you all apparently don't like like go gung ho into my cooking, you're like, okay, <laughs> yeah. Kara eats weird stuff. Let's just say, let's just leave it at that. Yeah. <laughs> but the big documenting of this was to inspire people to show my grandchildren what their crazy grandma did <laughs> on this property, <laughs> which they'll inherit, um, someday. which they will inherit someday. <laughs> so this was a raw piece of land. There's nothing on it, and you know when they're, you know, 20 years old, then they'll be able to see where it all started. Yeah, Kara's gonna be right back. Okay. It is really cold. I think we're in the 30s. Uh, Seriously, we're going to set a fire. <laughs> Go do a fire. Um, it is currently... Oh. Well, 34 <laughs> degrees. 34 <laughs> degrees. We're in the 30s. Yeah, it's getting colder. Winter is coming, so we are trying to get quite a bit done. Um, we're supposed to have rain today, and honestly, we did a really big, a lot yesterday, so that'll be an exciting video to see, and we're physically tired. Um, it says 30% chance of snow tomorrow. Oh, yay. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. We got this. We're, we're, we're good. getting there. We yeah. really are it's not there. snow that's going to snow today. No. It looks like it's going to warm back up a little bit, so then we can work on some roofing stuff. We're kind of holding out on that, because... I don't want to be working with metal roofing in the rain or the snow. Right. So that's, right. that's basically where we're at now. So, so yeah. Allison um, wants to know why we burn all the wood before using it. Oh, good question. So this is a Japanese style of preserving the lumber. You can take raw wood, um, and when you burn it, it changes the molecular structure in the lumber and creates it to be um, waterproof and rockproof. It's called Shoshiban, and you can look it up. <laughs> Julie doesn't know how to say it. <laughs> it actually took me a really long time to be able to say it. But it preserves the wood, and it uh, makes it to where I don't have to dump a bunch of chemicals in it. Another way that you can do it, you can actually buy the chemicals, and you can soak your lumber in those chemicals and, and treat it, and then have treated wood. This is a way to do that without chemicals. Well, this one... Um Vincent wants to know why we don't have an Amazon wish list <laughs> or a patron account yet. <laughs> well, because we're really small and new, new, and that just seems awkward to me. But <laughs> but we will. I do have a Patreon account. I have not put anything in it yet. We are talking about how we want to handle that. Um, I've talked to some of my other friends at YouTube and what they do. Um, and they kind of have a private Facebook group and just kind of give you a little bit more behind the scenes. Maybe the footage that gets cut out that doesn't make it into video. And because, you know, I don't know if you guys want to watch hour long videos. <laughs> I mean, we're funny, but we may not be that funny. <laughs> not for that long. By the end of the day, we're, we're done. exhausted. And so we are um, working out the kinks on all of that. Um, you know, one of the big things about me is I'm not a tech savvy type person, so I have to actually stop and learn how to do those things and then um, add it to uh, what we're doing. So we will be we will be doing that. We will be getting that set up, um, and I just I just think that's really sweet. And I just want to just pre thank anybody if you do anything. You don't have to. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that's really really very nice. <laughs> Um, Mount Beaches, I guess you know these people, Norm and Kim, they want to know, yes. how did you come about to buy your land and why such a large parcel? Okay, wait, there's a second part of the question. What advice would you have for others looking to do the same? Okay, Norm and Kim, I will be putting a link to them in the description below. They are wonderful people. Um, they came and visited Martin and Julie, which uh, Martin Johnson off grid, they are in the link uh, description below already. Um, and they are just wonderful. So hi! <laughs> Mountain Beaches. That's Mountain Beaches. Name. I'll put a link down below. So you guys, if you like traveling videos and you want to kind of see the U.S. and, and their fun shenanigans, they're a great, they're a great time. They're kicking the pants. Um, so, remind me the question again. How, how did you come about to buy your land and okay. why such a large parcel? So I had a realtor who had 
had been looking for about three years for me, and I wanted a minimum of 50 acres. Um, and the reason being for that is home setting, and I want didn't want neighbors close to me. Um, I this is actually my fifth farm. I basically had 20 acres, and it just wasn't enough, um, mainly because of the distance uh, of neighbors coming in and. And that kind of stuff. Whoa! Ah! Fire! <laughs> fire! Fire! Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> okay, we changed our mind on fire. We're not going to do that. <laughs> we really are trying to keep this under an hour. <laughs> okay, so I had a realtor and told him the 50 acres, and I really wanted uh, 50 acres for homesteading. My son actually wanted to raise buffalo, and since you know this, will, this property will be his inheritance someday, um, I wanted to make sure that that situation was available. That being said, I don't know if this is, um, being that it's a mountain, if it's buffalo land, buffalo land. <laughs> but, um, we looked at many places, there was not a lot available, and so um, the particular area that this is in, I'm not too far from, from groceries and you know, those type of things. Um, and that view, <laughs> I mean, we, we can't not mention that view, that still be on the property. So. And then what was the advice? Is that the rest of it? What advice would you have for others looking to do the same? Um, so I know a few people that have done Facebook Marketplace and just kind of thrown out there that I guess there's a lot of stuff that sells on the Facebook Marketplace. Visit the area. Um, I've been up here a few times um, before I actually bought. Uh, I actually looked at weather patterns because I'm, uh, you know, Arizona and Texas, we don't get a lot of snow. And then I was in Washington um, for about seven years and they also don't get as much snow, even though I was in the foothills of the Cascades. Um, so I didn't want to get eight feet of snow. That was just not my thing. So there are different areas, actually not too far from where I'm at, that get quite a bit more snow than I do. So that was that was something that was important to me. Um, so I looked at the weather, and you know, obviously you're going to have what was it, 2008, where everybody got 12 feet of snow. <laughs> I think that's going to happen every now and then, but that's not the norm. So that was actually very important to me. So those were the things that. Uh, and building codes. I didn't want um, huge building codes. Kira, don't prove me. <laughs> That's why I'm smiling. So I didn't want to be as, you know, in in some of the other counties that, that want you, like for instance, Putney County, you, there's a lot of building codes. It's much harder to do things like, I don't even think we'd be able to do this building, Putney County. But the county that we're in, they're a lot more lax. You just have to have a, a um, building permit? No, it's not even a building permit. It's a location permit as to where you're putting your building. Gotcha. And then from that point on, you know, there's little things here and there, but not uh, not very much. So, you know, that's that's uh, definitely look at those counties, depending upon what you're going to want to do. If you want to self-build, if you want to use uh, lumber that you've milled and that kind of stuff, you're gonna that's going to be a big push as to where you would actually be. So uh, Wes wants to know about your experience with your wood mill. He said <laughs> it could be an episode on its own, but it, what works and what doesn't? It really could be an episode on its own. <laughs> I love my sawmill. Um, there was a huge learning curve. I had no idea. I, honestly, I didn't even know how to start. Really couldn't start a chainsaw last year. I knew how to do it. I just couldn't do it. So uh, jumping from you know a very limited amount of you know, using of tools and stuff like that into that piece of equipment was extremely intimidating. And I guess my biggest set of advice on that is don't start with really big, beautiful logs because you're going to destroy them <laughs> until you know what you're doing. Um, that one is going to be, uh, we will do an entire new video on that, you know, where I'll just talk about the wood miser because there's a ton in that. I think. I think another good thing would be to make sure that they give you the lessons. She was not able to get the lessons. Yeah. Because of uh, COVID. the pandemic, I don't think we're allowed to say oh, that <laughs> anymore. I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe we are. I'm not sure anymore what the rules are. But Oops. because of the pandemic, 
Um, that was one of the things you're supposed to get a four hour class with the Woodmiser when you get it to teach you how to use the whole thing. I couldn't get that. So basically they handed me the manual and said, here you go. Good luck. <laughs> it was very nice about it. It was very, very nice about it. So nothing bad about that. And Woodmiser has been great if you call them and you want um, help or whatever. They're wonderful. So I have nothing bad to say about Woodmiser. That had nothing to do with the company. It just had to do with what was going on in Is the world in 2020. Though? Okay, so Vincent has a lot of questions, so we're just going to hit a couple little ones here. Okay. Um, uh, basically, he's asking about the winter heating plans, which I think we went so? over. Yeah. yeah. Um, let's see, um, for the 73 acres, how many have they actually seen? Probably 10. <laughs> I think it's about 10. Um, and I've gotten into different places on the property and showed you views and stuff like that. But as far as just walking through, a lot of it is so thick that you can't get into. Yeah. So slowly but surely we'll be clearing that underbrush for fire safety and that kind of thing. Um, and putting in gardens and, and that. Um, my son will be also building on this property um, in the five years or so. So that area will be cleared out and, you know, but yeah. And about even ten, about 10. Part of that 10 where we, we did that um, exhausting hike down the mountain to go look yeah. at the drone up. Yeah, that probably is part of that 10. And, you know, and it took me, gosh, what, four or five months before I even went to yeah, the top of the mountain true. because, you know, broken rib, but also yeah. because it, it, it's quite a hike. Well, yeah, and it convinced me to go out there. And, like, and, no. the, and the neighbor let me know that we do have a cave on the property that does have water. So I don't, we talked about our water thing. So we are planning on hiking to that. Uh, but we probably won't get to it this year, though. I'll be so. convinced her to do it during, like, summer or spring. She wants to go do it this season. It's too cold for that. It's, it's too cold right now. So, yeah, we're probably going to do it late spring after all the rain and early summer. And then we'll get that water tested and see if that's an option to drilling a well because wells yeah. right now i think are they said thirty five thousand is what it's gone up yeah. to to drill a well yeah. and so that's not a guarantee not a guarantee i am going to do rain collection also i know that wasn't part of the question but i'll send to that <laughs> okay next next uh let's see the turkey lost its chicken have you fished in your lake no, I have not, but they do ice fishing throughout the winter on that, and we are actually thinking to try that. I've never done that before, and Kimmy is an avid fisher. Um, used to be. Yeah, it's used to while, be. It's been a while. But I'm a summer fisher, so they ain't getting me on that. Kim has done some, Akira has done some fishing, um, but we are planning on it, but no, right now we've just been yeah, as hard as we I, possibly can to get something to live in. I cannot <laughs> wait to <laughs> say. That was from Katie Dad. Thank you for the question. Um... Uh, let's see. Vincent also wants to know, did we build an outhouse? We did not. <laughs> we do have the RV, and it does have a bathroom in it. Um, we have, uh, I have a travel, I actually travel, I have a motorcycle of Harley, and I have a leisure light trailer that Kira was staying in, and I pull with that. And I've done tent camping off my bike, and, and then the trailer. And I have a pop-up um, outhouse that... Uh, it's an out, uh, outhouse shower thing that I pulled out of that camping gear, and we have set that up for wherever people come visit and that kind of thing. So, um, how Deidre, Deidre, sorry, Deidre, how did you find the container unit? Um, I just googled um, shipping containers in my area, and Dry Box came up, and they had a, a place in Post Falls. And I went down there and checked them out, and that's who I ended up buying from it. And that is actually who moved the shipping container. They delivered it here, and then they came and moved it. So Josh and Dry Box is amazing, and put this oh container gosh. where it is. You and have to go see that video yeah. if you haven't seen it. <laughs> it was amazing. I will be putting um, all, linking all the videos together. I forget what they call that. Um, and and that will be in it. But you can go back and look, and it was just crazy. This Getting put back here. So I think this one's my favorite question of all. Kay wants to know, do you adopt old Aussie <laughs> ladies? I say yes. <laughs> <laughs> we 
would love it. That would be so fun. <laughs> okay, for your question. Sweet. Okay. I'll Anna, put you. I'll put you to work. <laughs> okay, so Vincent wants to know where did you serve in the military? I was in uh, Hawaii with Kim, and then from Hawaii I went to Fort Knox, Kentucky, and then also Fort McClellan, Alabama. Oh, Fort McClellan, Alabama. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you eat my dad? Here? And we, I met her. I actually know both of her parents. Her dad was stationed in Hawaii with us, also. Okay. So, because my dad lives in Kentucky right now, so I was like, wait a minute, uh, I need to put this math together. <laughs> um, they want to know Vincent again. Uh, where did your bobcat go? Oh, um, so I don't know, but yes, I we do have a, cat, a wild cat up here, and I do think it's a bobcat. Kira wants to catch it, make it a friend, and no, that's not going to happen. Um, we do see, I don't see the tracks, but that's just because uh, we're not in the winter, and so I can see the tracks in the wintertime. But I did pick up some game cameras, and we will be setting those up. And they're not super fancy, they just take picture. Um, but I've got a couple of those that I want to put up this year so that we can actually see what's what's hanging out. There are apparently cougar, a cougar that um, comes through here, and then there's a bobcat that the neighbors have caught uh, sleeping on their decks and all kinds Aww. of stuff. Yeah. Aww, we no. saw a skunk on a neighbor's. We did. Uh, <laughs> and we were dropping his dog. <laughs> that was pretty fun. Yeah, we asked if she had a pet skunk. She goes, probably. <laughs> she's half asleep. asleep. <laughs> Um, if someone wanted to lend a hand, do you allow that? Well, she has issues I with it. I mean, I have uh, I have a very wonderful church family that has come and helped, um, and we do that. Uh, we do allow people that we know, um, basically for safety reasons. <laughs> uh, we uh, we were military police, so we definitely know how to defend ourselves, um, but. <laughs> Um, still very cautious about um, allowing people that we don't know here. I mean, that's just, you know, I, I'm, um, I have PTSD um, from my service, and um, so I don't uh, do really well around a bunch of people that I don't know, so <laughs> I have to be really careful with that to, to not trigger uh, the PTSD. So and I think that's super sweet, and honestly, the best way that you guys can help us is to watch the videos, to share the videos. Um, you know, if you know somebody who you think would be inspired by us, to share the video and get them to, you know, tell them you may, they may want to subscribe. And as much as it kind of sucks, watch the commercials. Yeah. I don't expect anybody to watch a 45-minute uh, commercial, you know, but if you could watch the shorter ones, that would be great. Um, Those but, help a lot. But yeah, once we get, uh, you know, as we get more subscribers and that kind of thing, YouTube will be paying us, and so that's a huge amount. Okay, we had a short break. So there's been a couple of people have been um, kind of wanting to know exactly where we live. And for safety reasons, we're just not going to put that out there. Um, so if you ask that question, I'm not going to answer it. Um, basically, we're in northern Idaho. <laughs> um, so that's it. And no, Vincent, I did not lose my come along. <laughs> I just forget that I have it. <laughs> um, and yeah, it's kind of one of those things. A lot of the stuff is stored away. We put up the tool shed and we just haven't been able to organize that or anything so I forget some of the things that I have and I don't know where they are and it would take longer to go find them and just usually it's let's just try to do some brute strength to get things moved and done uh, which you know hopefully next year we won't have to do because I'll know where things are and things will be organized so some of the upcoming things that we're going to be doing um, next year as far as builds uh, there'll be a barn garage over by the sawmill and then the sawmill will probably be shifted into its own particular area I need to get a building over that we have fencing we have critters we have garden we have lots of you know, all the, I do a lot of canning I do actually we do a lot of cooking we do a lot of that kind of stuff so if you guys would be interested in seeing any of that let me know um, because then we'll, we'll we'll continue to do that but that won't be later until next year um, and also, so I'm editing, I was editing this morning, and we have a lot of footage, um, and I fast forward through a lot of it, and, uh, but I'm trying to keep my videos down under 30 minutes is, is the deal. Um, so as far as last week, me splitting them into, would you rather see things fast forwarded through and kind of time lapse, or do you mind, are you okay with that? 
splitting it into multiple days. Um, so for instance, we're physically exhausted. We're kind of taking a day today, a break today, and probably tomorrow because of weather, um, but also to physically rest our bodies so that we don't start injuring ourselves. Um, and that continues to give us daily footage if I break things up. Right. So um, guess it's a break. Because yeah. <laughs> we need breaks. Well, we need rest. <laughs> what? I wanted to be known real quick before we went to the break. Another part of the thing is we have trouble asking for help. It's like, <laughs> well, yeah. which, and that's, you know, the church family comes in and helps. And, and they, well, they, make, they, they make finger it. wag at us and tell us that we need to let them help us. And, and we really appreciate it. And it's absolutely wonderful. And Julie and Seth and uh, Mari have come over and helped. And, you know, that's just been wonderful. The people that have come and helped, we really enjoy them. Yes. She, her, for her, her thing is, it's hard to ask for help. I was taught and trained not to ask for help. So, but what like, difference? We're but we are working on it. We are working on it. Yeah. So I think we've kind of hit almost a little bit under an hour, and that's probably long enough. I'm gonna go edit this. We're gonna upload it, and then I'm gonna bring it out to you guys. We will be trying, like I said, to do this twice a week. And um, if we have extra saw milling, if we're milling, and we have, we usually mill a bunch of logs at one time. We show one in the actual vlog and then the rest we don't show and that's what I've been putting out for Saturday milling videos are those particular days. Um, so I don't wear a lot of pink. <laughs> it just looks like it because I'm milling 12 logs in one day and so it looks like 12 days I haven't worn pink. Uh, just the same day. clothes. And then all the same clothes, yeah. <laughs> so um, again, Thank you guys so much, uh, all of the new subscribers and everybody that's here and the people that supported me from the very beginning. And uh, I, I just appreciate you guys so much. Um, it's really kind of amazing. And the goal is to inspire. The goal is to show that you can have fun um, while doing hard things um, and dealing with hard things. Uh, you can still have a good time that it, it kind of is a choice. Um, at least it is for me, and that's what I want to inspire people to do. And the, you can help us the most by sharing our videos on your social media and watching. commenting like you guys are, watching the commercials, watching the videos all the way through. Um, that's really helpful. It helps the YouTube algorithm. And what else, ladies? And we love hearing all that oh encouragement. My gosh. You guys have been so yeah. encouraging and uh, inspiring and you brought us to tears at times. So I just, times. I yeah. thank you so much. Yeah, we really appreciate you. So, all right, let me go up and get this edited and her into the warmth. <laughs> Bye! Bye.